Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Almighty God. Father, we give you the glory. Righteous Father, we reverence your holy name, for there is none like you. King of glory, we thank you. My Creator, my Father, we thank you. Awesome God, we thank you. Jesus Christ, my Lord and personal Savior, we thank you. Daddy, we give you the glory. We reverence your holy name. There is none like you. For your grace, for your mercy, for your loving kindness, my Creator, my Father, we thank you for giving us the privilege to be alive, to be in your presence again. Our Almighty God, we thank you. For divine direction, King of glory, we thank you. For your loving kindness, righteous Father, we thank you. Daddy, we give you the glory. There is none like you, Jesus. Blessed be your holy name. For in Jesus Christ's mighty name, we have given thanks. Almighty God, we crown to you. I empty myself before you as I submit myself to tell you unto you, righteous Father. Please fill me with the knowledge of your word and teach each and every one of us, including me, O God, your word, that will help us to run our heaven race successfully and make it to heaven the holiest of holy. In the name of Jesus Christ. Father Almighty God, as we are about to study your word, awesome God, I crown to you. Please grant us, O God, a divine insight into the knowledge of your word. Father, in your mercy, open our understanding to the knowledge of your word, that we may be part of that glorious destiny home, the holiest of holy, in the name of Jesus Christ. Father Almighty God, we crown to you. For as many that are destined to hear your word today, Father Almighty God, wherever they are, awesome God, please see your mercy. Visit them and let them hear your word. Father, we crown to you. Every word of yours, O oh God, that we hear today, Father, let it find practical manifestation and fulfillment in our lives to the glory of your name. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. My creator, my father, we thank you. Blessed be your holy name. In Jesus Christ's mighty name, we have prayed. You hosted already? Where, where did you do? Okay, so can I leave it for now? Mm -hmm. Can I leave it for now? Mm -hmm. No, you say, well, you normally do it. You say, leave it for now. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Yes, thank you. God bless you. Thank you, Jesus. Sorry for that. Father Almighty God, we thank you. People of God, I want to appreciate God for you. I want to appreciate God for everyone that will be part of this Bible study today. Family worship are. I want to thank God because I know that God Almighty has brought you to this platform today has a reason and he will fulfill that purpose to which he has brought you to this platform today in your life in the name of Jesus Christ. Almighty God, we thank you. People of God, wherever you are on this planet, Ed, I want you to pick your Bible, pick your jotting materials. We are about to study the word of God. And our topic for today is seeking God and the knowledge of his word. Seeking God Almighty, that is seeking the face of God and the knowledge of his word. You must understand who God is. How do we get to know God? Where do we find him? These are some of the things that you have to first ask yourself before we go into the message of today. Who is God? How do we find him? And where do we find him? Because the topic of today is seeking God and the knowledge of his word. People of God, I want to encourage you to be part of today's program. I know God Almighty has never failed us. He's faithful and just to do that unusual miracle in our life, in the life of as many that will be part of this program today in the name of Jesus Christ. People of God, I want to welcome you to Altar of Prayer Fellowship Family Worship Hour. This is a program, I believe, by faith, designed by God, leading us to do for us as a people, wherever ministry, whatever place we find ourselves, wherever we worship, the time for us to come together and study the word of God. Yes, you might be a businessman. Maybe you believe you have the knowledge of the word of God, all the word, all the knowledge you needed in life. But I want to tell you, there is an aspect that you don't know. You can't know more than God Almighty. It's impossible. You cannot know more than God Almighty. 
I want to assure you that if only you can key into the word of God today, if you can hack into the voice of the Lord today, God Almighty is faithful, who will not leave you, he will not forsake you, and that will he allow you to perish. People of God, I want to appeal to you to pick up your writing material, as I said earlier, let us all begin to study the word of God, because it is important that we come to the knowledge of the word of God and what God is saying concerning each and every one of us. What is God saying concerning you? Like I said earlier also, we are going to know what who is God. Where do we find him? How do we come to understand him? That is why we said the word of God, we, see, we are looking at today the Holy Bible, is seeking God and the knowledge of his word. Follow me to the book of John. Just before we start, follow me to the book of John chapter 1. Who is God? Where do we find him? And how do we look at him? According to the word of the Lord in John chapter 1. According to the word of the Lord in John chapter 1. We are going to read from verse 1. Again, I want to say God, I want to say God bless you. For as many that will come across this message, I want to say God bless you and I pray God Almighty will lead you. He will direct you. He will instruct you from today so that you will be part of his mighty family. You will be part of the chosen ones. You will be part of the souls that you have called to live to please him. Praise the Lord. People of God, follow me to the book of John chapter 1. John chapter 1. We are reading from verse 1. Who is God? Where can we find him? How do we locate him? And what exactly do we need to know about God? So, you know, the book of John simply gives us a total, a one-shot explanation on to some of these questions that arise in our daily life. You know, wherever you, you worship, wherever you are going to church today, I want to say God bless you. But it's time for us to look at the Bible and see some of the things that we need to do, some of the decisions that we need to take, some of the steps that we need to take in life, some of the reasons, the reasons why we, things are not going the way we desire them. When we begin to look at the word of God, you now begin to understand that there are areas of your life that you need to fine tune to be in line with God's purpose for your life. People of God, I want to please encourage you to please join with me and begin to look at the word of God, the word of God, the Holy Bible. According to the word of the Lord in John chapter 1, I read from verse 1. I read in Jesus' name. This is King James Version. The word of God said, in the beginning was the word, W-O-R-D. I love to state it so that we will know what exactly we are looking in the beginning of the world. That is when this world was being created. In the beginning was the world. In the beginning, in John chapter 1. Please, let us read John chapter 1, reading from verse 1. I'm going to also read near NIV, New International Version. Why am I saying this? I want each and every one of us to follow, to be able to have an understanding, possibly look at a more simpler version where you can understand so that no one will be telling you things that you think is not there. All we are looking at today is the Holy Bible. We are not looking at anything that pertains unto us. We are looking at the Holy Bible, the Word of God. People of God, according to the Word of the Lord, in John chapter 1, reading from verse 1, in New International Version, the Word of God said, In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. We are asking ourselves today, the first question, who is God? We are finding today that in the beginning, the Word was with God. In the beginning was the Word. And the Word, the Bible, the Holy Book, was with God. And the Word was God. At the time of the creation of the heaven and the earth, the power that created the heaven and earth is God Almighty. And that is the word of God we are privileged to have. So if you are looking for where to find God, here he, it is. You need not to seek too far. This is God Almighty. I most time call it the mind of God. Because the word of God is speaking to us that this is God Almighty. This is the power that created the heaven and the earth. The Holy Bible. The word of God said in the beginning was the world. Looking at in New International Version NIV. And the word was with God, and the word was God, right from the beginning of the creation of the heaven and the earth. Praise the Lord. The beginning, in John chapter 1, reading from verse 1, 
the word of God said, in the beginning was the word, W-O-R-D. And the word was with God, and the word was God. Verse 2. I'm still in the New International Version. He was with God in the beginning. Through him, all things were made. Without him, nothing was made that has been made. The word of God said to us that it is by this word of God, the Holy Bible, that the word was being created. It is by the word of God, which is God himself, that the word was being created. So the power that created the heaven and the earth and everything that is in it, it is the word of God, the Holy Bible. It is not my word. I have no words of my own. We are reading and studying the word of God, the Holy Bible today. Remember the topic of today is seeking God and the knowledge of God. We'll be looking at the areas which we need to critically look at, examine our life if we are really complying. Because it is not an option. It is not optional. Neither was it um, a recommendation. It's an instruction that we should seek God, looking at the word of God. No wonder the word of God said to us in this Bible verse we are reading. In John chapter 1, reading from verse 1, we have just read verse 2, that nothing on this earth was created except by the word of God. So everything was created by the word of God. You will be imagine, ah, is it true? Yes. Everything you see on this planet earth was created by the word of God. And God Almighty is still in existence. His word is still in existence. No wonder the Holy Bible has been in existence before the creation of man. If you ever look at the word of God, you will not say this is the author. They only talked about maybe those who translated it from either the Greek word, but the author of the word of God is God himself because the word of God was written under the inspiration of the Holy Spirit as led by the power of God Almighty. So people of God, let us have it in mind that what we are looking at today, what we are seeking to know today is the mind of God, which is God himself. Let me read further verse 3. John chapter 1. I'm reading verse 3. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Through him, all things were made. Without him, nothing was made that has been made. In him was life. In him, the word of God, God Almighty, was life. And that life was the light of all mankind. In the word of God, the Holy Bible, which is God Almighty, was life. And without him, without that light, we cannot live. Why? Because that is light that brought life unto us. In him was life. And the life was the light of men, of all mankind. Sorry. The light shined in darkness, and the darkness has not overcome it. Up to date. Remember, if you look at this, what it said, uh, darkness have not overcome that light. In him was life. And that life bringeth light unto man. And darkness, powers of darkness, to date, have not overcome the light that the word of God has brought to us. Praise the Lord. If you read from verse 6, it said, there was a man sent from God whose name was John. He came as a witness to testify concerning that light. John the Baptist was sent from God to testify about the light that brought life unto man. And the word of God said, he came as a witness to testify concerning that light, so that through him all might believe. He himself was not the light. He came only as a witness to the light. That was the purpose of John the Baptist came in. The word of God said in verse 9, the true light that giveth light, the true light that gives light to everyone was coming into the world. He was in the world, and though the world was made through him. What a mystery. The light that brings life unto man was in the world. That is why it's the word of God, the Bible. It has been in existence since. The, it was, he has been with man. Thank you, Jesus. He said the true light that gives life to everyone was coming into the world. He was in the world. And though the world was made through him, the world did not recognize him. Right from the beginning, 
this light has been with us. Because that is the world. How did I know? It is the same power that created the heaven and the earth. And he has been with us. A lot of people never knew him. Even people around him, around the world, before he even came in form of a human being, before he took the place of a human and come and dwell among us, people rejected him. No wonder when the warning came in the days of Noah, men still rejected the world. They rejected the light because that is the world that created the heaven and the earth. He commanded them, they should forsake their ways. They should forsake their evil ways. They refuse. If you look like what happened in the days of Sodom and Gomorrah, they refuse to hack into the word of God, to depart from those acts of wickedness, those things that they do to abuse mankind. But he has been in existence right from the creation of the heaven and the earth because that is the same power that created the heaven and the earth. But even while he was there, before he would transform to become a man, came people of God, the world did not obey him. That is how disobedient mankind has been to the existence of life. People of God, we need to be careful of what we do. Like I said earlier, this Bible study we are doing today is not about me, that is about my wife or about you, my brother. It's about our soul. We are able to end up. So it's not about a specific person. It's about you and I. Where will our soul end up? And how do we secure ourselves in the palm of Jesus Christ? Praise the Lord. How do we secure ourselves in the palm of Jesus Christ? I want to digress a little. I don't know who will come across this message. Or you know of anybody. You know of anybody. It's not everybody that will be a part of this thing I'm about to announce. You know of anybody whom life has become frustrated. You know of anybody where nothing good happened in his life. You know of any brother or sister that it seems that no hope. Let me tell you. What happened to man is that while men slept, the enemy came and so tied among the weak. So when you begin to see anyone going through that process, please, I want to appeal to you. It is time for you to invite that person. We are going to announce it as we go further. Maybe as we read this, finish reading this, John, we announce it officially because there is something coming up for those people. We all need to. It's not for everybody. It's a time for people whom the enemy thought they are finished with. It is time for them to come around, join faith together, and begin to pray. That session will be established for people, for brethren, sisters, for families, that all hope is lost for, to begin to come together and begin to pray. We will be having a first, in that one hour program, a 15 minutes Bible study. Then the rest 45 minutes is praying. Then we'll schedule another time again where we'll be praying at midnight, possibly very late at midnight for wherever you are. People of God, it's time for you. That's so that the enemy thought they have wasted to crown to God for divine healing. Revival is coming to the land. Revival will come onto your home. Don't bother how far they have destroyed your destiny. It is time for you to begin to experience the hand of God. But remember, nothing good come easy. Because the word of God tells us, right from the days of John the Baptist, up to now, I repeat, up to now, the heaven suffered so violence, and only the violence take it by force. Nothing come easy. You need to fight for it. It is time to fight. People of God, we will be gathering. As we continue, I will announce the time. We will be gathering. Even if it's only me that is in that platform today, I will do my own prayer. It is time for whosoever that is God going to come on that platform. All you need to do is to send me, uh, send me the, the, the prayer line. It's strictly for people whose life has been miserable. People who have been struggling with no result. It is time for us to begin to gather together and cry out to God and seek the face of God. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Let me read further, please. Sorry for that digression. The word of God is saying to us, I'm going to read. Verse 10. He was in the world. And though the word was made through him, the word did not recognize him. Verse 11 of John chapter 1. He came to that which was his own, but his own did not receive him. Yet to all who did receive him, to those who believed in his name, 
he give the right to become children of God. Children born not of natural descent, nor of human decision, or of a husband, husband's will, but born of God. That is what he came for. We are talking about God and how he came to manifest himself to man, even in form of a man. The word of God said to us in verse 14 of that John chapter 1. I read in Jesus' name. The word became flesh. I read W-O-R-D. Now the word that created the heaven and the earth became flesh and made his dwelling among us. The word that created the heaven and the earth turned to become flesh by the power of God Almighty and dwell among us. We have seen his glory and the glory of the one and the Holy Son who came from the Father full of grace and truth. What did he call it? Grace and truth. Grace the opportunity for you, for me, to be able to be saved from sin and never to go back to sin. Remember, when you are saved by grace, you ought not to go to sin. No wonder Paul said, shall a man continue to abide in sin that grace may abound? He said, God forbid. So you are not permitted, after being saved by grace, to go back to sinful nature. People of God, it's time for us to cry unto God. It's time for us to cry unto God and seek the face of God. We are looking at the world, seeking God and the knowledge of God. Praise the Lord. According to John chapter 1, reading from verse 1 to verse 14, we have come to understand who God is. This is God himself, because it is the mind. this is the mind of God. The Holy Bible is God himself. And he who came to dwell among us as in flesh, even with them, a lot of people still rejected him. Mankind that he came to die for, they still crucify him. People of God, you see the wicked world we have. The one who came to save mankind. So he went further to betray him and crucify him. Mercy, Lord. Mercy upon us, Jesus. Thank you, Father. People of God, as we look further on this word of God today, we'll be critically looking at the word of God and how it applies to our daily life. I want to tell you, there is no shortcut. It's either you give your life to God or the enemy, the devil, take over your life. I want to assure you, if you can accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and personal Savior today, there you will find rest. There you will find peace. There you will find joy. There you will find abundance. Praise the Lord. Seeking God and the knowledge of his word, the Holy Bible. Follow me to the book of Isaiah, chapter 55. Isaiah, chapter 55. We are going to read from verse 6. Isaiah, chapter 55. I'm going to read New Living Translation. Thank you, Jesus. I'm going to read New Living Translation of Isaiah, chapter 55. You can read any version. We are going to read from verse 6. Isaiah chapter 55, reading from verse 6 on to verse 11. Thank you, Jesus. I read in Jesus' name. The word of God said to us, Isaiah chapter 55, He said to me, Seek the Lord while you can find him. It is an instruction. It is not an advice. If you look at it critically, seek the Lord while you can find him. Seek the Lord while you can find him. Call on him now while he is near. The word of God is admonishing us today that we should seek the Lord God Almighty while we can find him. That we should seek the Lord God Almighty while we can find him. Because a time will come when you cannot find God. It is not my word. After judgment is a place of hell. If you do not make it to heaven, you can't be in limbo. You will surely make it to hell. I'm not judging you. That is the way I speak to myself. So I must strive to make it to heaven. I already know it's a battle and it's a journey on the narrow path. Why don't we sit up and begin to re-examine ourselves? Where is it that we are getting it wrong? What is it that we are not doing right? 
and let us begin to take a new step. People of God, I want to appeal to you, wherever you are, you that brother, as we read this word of God, please take note. The Bible is telling us today to seek the Lord, why we can find him, why it is his near now, we should seek here the Lord. The word of God said to us, I read again, Isaiah chapter 55, verse 6. He says, seek the Lord, why you can't find him. Call on him now, why he is near. How do we seek him again? Verse 7, let the wicked change their ways. So, the word of God said, let the wicked change their ways. And banish the very thought of doing wrong. Let them turn to the Lord, that he may have mercy on them. How do you seek the Lord? Depart from sinful nature. Here it is. Let the wicked change their ways and banish the very thought of doing wrong in their heart. Let the wicked change their ways and let the wicked banish the wrong of doing evil. Banish it from the thought of the heart. Praise the Lord. Let them turn to the Lord that he may have mercy upon them, seeking the Lord God Almighty and the knowledge of his word. The word of God said to us today, in the book of Isaiah, chapter 55, if you read from verse 4, verse, verse from verse 6, verse 7 onward, the word of God is saying to us that we seek, we should seek the Lord. Today, it is an opportunity. A lot of people might not have this opportunity tomorrow. Tomorrow, tomorrow might even be too far. Some people who resist the word of God today might not have the opportunity in an hour's time. Seek the Lord. God Almighty, why you can't find him now? Call on him Why he's still here. And the word of God for that tells us in verse 7, how do we seek the Lord? He said, let the wicked change their ways and banish the very thought of doing wrong. Change your ways. Banish the thought of doing wrong from your life. Banish it. Let them turn to the Lord, that he may have mercy on them. Yes, turn to our God, for he will forgive generously. Turn to God Almighty, for the word of God said, God will forgive generously. It is time for us to seek the Lord. It is time for us to seek the face of God. It is time for us as a people to seek the hand of God in our life. It is time for us as a people, to seek the face of God diligently, that we may find grace and mercy in his sight. The word of God today is seeking God and the knowledge of his word. And the word of God advises us to we should seek the Lord Why he is near. We should seek the Lord God now, Why we can find him. We should call on to him, God Almighty, Why he is near. And we should what? Forsake our wicked ways and banish every thought of doing wrong from our heart. It's not my word. We are reading Isaiah chapter 55, reading from verse 6, now on to verse 7. We are now going to read verse 8. Thank you, Jesus. My thought, hear what the word of God says. You know, a lot of people say, no, you talk about you know the word, you know the Bible too much. Let me tell you, or you know too much, whether you are a professor of theology, whether you are a free thinker, you feel you are so well educated or you have been following that the leader of that your church so much that you believe you know more than every other person that one is not an issue god bless you but it is time for you to seek the face of god seek the lord where you can find him and where will you find him the holy bible the bible is telling us we make the the word of god our life partner now because it's our manner it is the life that we live this is the mind of god and god himself Jesus coming to dwell in us, this dwell with us on earth. This is God Almighty. It is time for us to seek Him. Why we can find Him? Verse eight. I read in Jesus' name, Isaiah chapter fifty-five, verse eight. The Word of God said, "My thoughts are not like your thought, seer the Lord." You see the reason why you must seek the Lord. The Word of God is telling us today one of the reasons why we must seek the Lord diligently and the knowledge of His Word. Because the knowledge of his word, the Bible, is the mind of God. He said, my thought, God is speaking to you and I. He's saying to me, he's saying to you today, 
He said, our thoughts are not his thoughts. So you need to know, you need to cry out to God for God to reveal his mind to you. To me, I want to know God. That is the purpose why we have gathered here today. To know what to do at all times. To know that it is very important for us to seek the Lord, God Almighty, at all times. Going by his divine instruction, the word of God, the Holy Bible. He said to us in Isaiah chapter 55, verse 8, he said, My thoughts are nothing like your thoughts, says the Lord. Says the Lord. And my ways are far beyond anything you could imagine. Is it not better to let God Almighty reveal his secret, the mystery, and the ways of him alone unto you? And how you get to know him is to seek him. But one of the barriers that can come between you that you cannot see God diligently is iniquity. When iniquity reigns in your life, you cannot hear from God. Let me tell you. Any man that ever claimed to go and sign into evil paths, whether marine altar, witchcraft, familiar spirit, and the man come to the pulpit, because I don't know what they, I'm not sure that is a church. And he said he's hearing from God, he's lying. He's a liar. Murderers, frosters, who are seen as dead, living in sin. Cannot hear from they are not hearing from God. The only thing they can hear from God is warning. They can't hear a message. Any way you hear them speaking, what is speaking through them is familiar spirit. That is not the Holy Spirit. Holy, holy, the word of God said, Holy. Holy Spirit cannot dwell in a vessel that is evil. So whosoever read, let them read, 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 read the Bible for you. If they are not living a holy life or they are not striving to live a holy life. I want to assure you, what is speaking through them is not the Holy Spirit. Oh. Holy Spirit cannot dwell in a filthy vessel. What is speaking through them is familiar spirit, powers from the kingdom of darkness. So therefore, you and I need to personally, that's the way I always tell myself, whenever I hear the word of God, I will say, God bless you, you that man that is preaching this Bible. Believe me, I appreciate God for you, for using you to me, speak to me today. I want to take the same word of God and I want to study it. Because no one has monopoly over that to read the Bible. There's no one that has monopoly on this planet Earth. That's the only him have the monopoly to read the Bible. So he was the only one who is permitted to read, then not translate it or transcribe it or declare it to you. No, you have access to read the Bible. It doesn't bite. Seek God Almighty today. And seek the knowledge of God, the Holy Bible. Why we can find him now? According to the word of the Lord in Isaiah chapter 55. If you read verse 7, verse 6, verse 7, verse 8. It is time for us to seek the word of God. Hallelujah. We are reading up to verse 11 of this Isaiah chapter 55. The word of God said, if you permit me again, verse 8. He said, my thought are nothing like your thought, says the Lord. And my ways are far beyond anything you could imagine. For just, for just as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than yours. God is speaking to you and I today, saying, as the heavens are far higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than yours. My ways are far, 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 far higher than the ways of man declared by God Almighty is not my word. Read the word of God in Isaiah chapter 55, verse 8. People of God, we need not to be deceived. Verse 8 up to verse 9. Further, we are going to read. And it said, verse 10, the rain and snow come down from the heaven and stay on the ground to water the earth. They cause the grain to grow, produce seed for the farmer, and bring it and, and bread for the hungry. It is the same with my word. I send it out and it will produce fruit. It will accompany all I want it to. And it will prosper everywhere I send it. You will live in joy and peace. The mountain and hill will burst into song. 
and the trees of the field will clap their hands. It's not my word. The word of God is saying to them that we should seek the God and the knowledge of his word. No wonder the Bible is instructing us today because he has come to tell us, God has come to tell us today that by studying his word, we are beginning to understand his ways. For he said, my ways are not your ways. So it is better you and I know the way of God than you all, or, or, than any one of us living in ignorance, in assumption that I know everything. You can never know more than the Holy Spirit. It's not possible for any man to know more than the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is the only spirit that knows when souls are being created. Only the Holy Spirit knows how flesh add to flesh. How did the little baby of a small flesh grow to become an adult with big bones in their body? It is only the knowledge of God, that is the Bible, the Holy Spirit dwelling through the Word of God in us, that know the secret and the mystery. So it is better we begin to seek Him, because the topic of today is so critical to me. We must learn to seek God and the knowledge of His Word. Praise the Lord. I must tell you, when God is leading you, He will watch over you. You know, there was this issue, there was this thing I was like, I got to observe. You know what I did? I pray over it, and I continue to pray over it. And I told God Almighty, I will continue to pray. It's you that will answer me. Mine is to pray. God Almighty, it is your duty to answer me. If I live to please you, I am striving to live to please you. You can make me holy and do that which I desire from you. People of God, how do you seek God? You must know that by prayer, in prayer, you seek God. In the study of the word of God, you seek God. In your lifestyle, living to please God, you seek God. Follow me to the book of 2 Chronicles chapter 15. Follow me to the book of 2 Chronicles chapter 15. Thank you, Jesus. 2 Chronicles chapter 15. I'm going to read from verse 1 quickly to verse 3. The word of God said, then the Spirit of God came upon Azariah, son of Oded. And he went out to meet the king Asa, to meet King Asa, as he was returning from the battle. Listen to me, Asa. He shouted, Listen, all you people of Judah and Benjamin, the Lord will stay with you as long as you stay with him. Whenever you seek him, you will find him. But if you abandon him, he will abandon you. Isaiah was being led by the Spirit of God. He said, then the Spirit of God came upon Isaiah. Being led by the Spirit of God, Isaiah spoke to Asa and said, listing. Seek God now, because if you seek God and dwell with him, he will in turn dwell with you. But if you refuse to seek God, God also will not dwell with you. He simply specify to them. What you need to overcome this trial is to seek God and seek his face and learn to live to please him. Then he will dwell with you. And this wickedness will pass by, and you will begin to live a new life. People of God, I want to appeal to you. Wherever you are, it is time for you to seek the face of God. It is time for you to seek the face of God. I don't know who will come across this message. Like I said earlier, this one is not for everyone. It's for people who their situation has been written off. They have been struggling for many years. Nothing to write to me about. All of us will join, we begin to pray. We'll be meeting on our Zoom platform. We'll be meeting on our Zoom platform. If you want to be part of it, drop a message on our message, on our Facebook Messenger. It is time for us to pray. For those who want to seek the face of God. We want to dedicate, dedicate our life to, to winning battles against the enemy. 
Enough is enough that your destiny has been mutilated for too long. You have been struggling for too long. You need to change your mentality. Say 6 p.m., sorry, 7 p.m. New York time. Immediately after our prayer hour today, it is time for those who their situation have been written up to come together. We are going to join faith together to pray. The yoke that have tied your soul and destiny in bondage must be destroyed. Whether it is one person that is there, we must pray. I will be praying. If you join to God be the glory. If you don't join, does it stop me from praying? On our Zoom platform, we'll be praying for one hour. The first 15 minutes is to open our eyes to what God has done for us when Jesus Christ went to the cross and set us free from that wickedness that have been manipulating the life of that brother, that sister, that child. One, uh, 45 minutes praying. 15 minutes to study the word of God. People of God, it's not for everybody. After this program and our prayer hour by 6 p.m. to 7 p.m., those who desire a new a change, those who desire that enough is enough, this wickedness must not continue. Or oh, they have told you that your case has been written off. You cannot live again that uh, they say your enemy will die. You will tell them by the word of God, this is not what God is saying concerning you. That program from 7 p.m. to 8 p.m., it is one hour, and it might be 1 a.m. in Africa. It might be 1 a.m. in Europe. It might be, it will be 8 p.m. in New York time. People of God, only for those whom want a different. Others, every other person, you can go to bed after we finish praying by 6 p.m. But for those who their situation has been so terrible, even the afflicted, come let us join faith together and be praying. It is not going to be a battle for it. From, from now to the end of this year, we we'll continue to pray. That situation must change. 8 p.m. New York, 7 p.m., sorry, New York time. People of God, it is time to seek the face of God. According to the word of the Lord, in Isaiah chapter 59, verse 1 to verse 2, hallelujah, how does one seek God? Because King Isaiah said, um, Isaiah, Isaiah declared, he said, if you refuse to seek God, God Almighty, we abandon you. According to the word of the Lord in 2 Chronicle. According to the word of the Lord in 2 Chronicle chapter 15. When you read from verse 1 up to verse 3. Then, how does one, how does anyone forsake God? How do you forsake God? Because the Bible tells us, he was speaking to the people in Benjamin. That please, before this calamity consume everyone, it is better you call to God Almighty so that He too can come and dwell with you. Don't fight the battle with physical battle. Let me tell you, because you don't understand the word of God, that is why the wicked have been prevailing. The word of God speaking to us. For you to understand the word of God, you need to know what exactly has confronted you. If you look at the word of God, in 2 Corinthians chapter 10, you read it from verse 3. The word of God said, though we live, that is walk, W-A-L-K, though we walk in the flesh, he said we do not walk, we do we not fight battle with the flesh. Though we walk in the flesh, we walk, physical walking. He said, the word of God said, the battle we fight is not a physical battle. He said, for the battle, uh, the, for, he said, though we walk in the flesh, we do not walk after the flesh. And for the weapon of our warfare, they are not physical weapon. You can't use physical weapon to be fighting spiritual matters. How do I, uh, let me give you an instance before we go further on to Second Chronicle chapter, before we go further on to Isaiah chapter 59 verse 1 to verse 5. I had a friend, I would call him a cousin. One day he walked up to my room where I was very long ago. And I was just lying down on the raw carpet. And he said to me, he said he wanted to confine something. He wanted to tell me something. He didn't say he was going to be sick. He just came to complain. He said, do you know that he has been going to everywhere? And everywhere he stepped into. He tells him that his life has been wasted. 
that the ones who gave birth to him use his glory for the aquatic ritual. But what mistake did he do? After struggling for many years, instead of him personally, that's why we are pro that program is coming up from now 8, 7 p.m. to 8 p.m. on Sunday. If it's late in your time, it is time, it's even better at odd midnight hour to break that yoke. The young man went to take knife. I was running after the mother. Oh, the parent. Well, for what are you fighting? You want to kill human beings? No. Go to God Almighty and fight that battle with the sword of God Almighty. Don't fight physical battles. Don't use spiritual, physical weapons to fight spiritual battles. They said they have wasted the glory. You are fighting physical issues. You want to fight physically or you want to be confronting the person. They told you somebody did something with uh, witchcraft power. You were confronting the person and say, I learned that. You learn what? Keep the person busy. Let the cop consuming fire of God Almighty begin to torment that agent of the devil. That is the morality you have to be part of it. I don't know. Whosoever you know that will be part of it, invite the person. You don't have to be there. If you, are not, if you don't fall into that category, you don't have to be there. There you will pray for yourself. There you will be praying, praying, praying. 7 p.m. to 8 p.m. New York time today. So use whatever time you have as you are now to calculate it. And we will just send us your number after this program on our messenger that we should send you. No, send a message to our messenger that we should send you our Zoom platform. Come and be part of life-changing experience. It's starting from today. Praise the Lord. Again, we are going to look at another word of God that is so important. Isaiah chapter 59, reading from verse 1 to verse 2. Isaiah chapter 59, reading from verse 1 to verse 2. Thank you, Jesus. We are looking at the word of God today, seeking God and the knowledge of God Almighty. Seeking God and the knowledge of God. Isaiah chapter 59, reading from verse 1 to verse 2. I read in Jesus, the New Living Translation. Listing the Lord's arm are not weak to save you, nor is his ears too deaf to hear you call. It is your sin that have cut you off from God. Because of your sin, he has turned away and will not listen anymore. How do you forsake God? Isaiah chapter 59, verse 1 and 2 is speaking to you today. Do not forsake God. And how do you forsake God? He said, the eyes of God are not too short that he cannot save you. That the ears of God, they are not as if they are dead, they can't hear you. God hears you clearly. He said, but what is stopping God from hearing from you today is the sin and iniquity in your life. So what do you need to do? Is to begin to depart from that sinful nature. No wonder we are looking at the word of God today, seeking God and the knowledge of God. You want to come out of that trial? People of God, it's time to seek the face of God. You want to come out from that trial, people of God, it's time to make a difference. You want to come out of that wickedness that has been mutilating your life for so long. People of God, it is time to seek the face of God. I want to also appeal to this group of persons. I want to appeal to this group of persons. An old friend, I want to tell you, it is better to be saved than to begin to think that you are not secure in the palm of occultic powers. And you can use those occultic powers to begin to attack those whom God have called to ministry and who mean no evil for you. Rather, I bring the love of God to you. But you turn around, you that young man that is supposed to be a friend, instead of taking the word of God I preach, you turn around and you think you're using those occultic powers. Let me tell you, it is better my soul make heaven than to join that your stupid occultic group. 
it's better God call me home than me going to join your cutting group. It's a message for somebody. He will get this message. I love you with the love of God. And I want you to repent. Because why? Hell is not a place great for you. You think it's a joke? You think it's a joke? Judgment is just by the corner. The end is nearer than you think. Repent today. For no occultic power will save you from hell. I love you with the love of God. And I appeal to you, repent. You, that old friend, repent. That occultic power they think you are using to attack me. Let me tell you. The only thing I fear is that God Almighty should not deny me of entry heaven. Every other thing, I'm not bothered. It's better I make heaven. You think I'm worried? Let me tell you, I had not talk like this. It is true revelation. But I want to you to appeal to that friend. I love you, and I want you to repent. People of God, I don't know who I know the person I'm talking to. He will come across this message. And when he come across this message, repent. It's not a regular member of altar of prayer fellowship. It's not a regular member, but you will get this message. Repent, brother. There is love in knowing Jesus. You will experience peace. I remember those days you were going through wickedness. You claimed that family members there were manipulating you with witchcraft. And you decided that you want to swear your hand. And you think now that you now have power. Now you are not in turn wanting to attack old friends who have never hurt you in any way. I have good news for you. There is victory for the children of God. We will be victorious against you by the power of God Almighty in the name of Jesus Christ. I want to appeal to whoever is hearing this message today. Please, I beg you, seek God now. According to the message of today, seeking God and the knowledge of his word, seek God now Why you can find him. It is better you seek God wherever you are. It is better you seek God now before it is too late. Praise the Lord. According to the word of the Lord in Amos chapter 5. According to the word of the Lord in Amos chapter 5. We are going to look at verse 4 and verse 15. Amos chapter 5. Please can somebody follow me. This is altar of prayer, fellowship, family, worshiper. A place where we come together to study the word of God, the Holy Bible. A place where we come together to study the word of God, the Holy Bible, and the knowledge of God. People of God, it is time for us to take our right jotting material, take the Bible verse down. After this message, you can study the word of God again. Go through it and know if all we have been talking about, we are speaking from our own mind or from the word of God. Whether it is our own words we are speaking or we are speaking the mind of God. Amos chapter 5. People of God. Amos chapter 5. I'm going to read verse 4 and verse 15. I read in living translation. I read in Jesus' name. Now, this is what the Lord says to the family of Israel. Come back to me and live. Did you hear that? Now, this is what God Almighty is saying to the Israelites. Remember, they are the firstborn. Why? We are the adopted children of God. And God is also, by faith, I believe, extending that call unto us today. In Amos chapter 5, verse 4. Now, this is what the Lord said to the family of Israel. Come back to me and leave. People of God, wherever you are. It is time for you to seek God now. Come back to him. Let God take over your life. Let God begin to do strange things, strange and mighty things in your life. God is calling upon you and I today. He said, come back to me. Let me read King James Version. Amos chapter 5 verse 4. For thus seal the Lord unto the house of Israel. Seek ye me and ye shall live. He's speaking to the people. Seek the Lord today and you will live. When you seek God, God is speaking to you. For those who seek him diligently with a pure heart. For as many that are seeking God diligently with a genuine and a pure heart, God said you will live. I am too sure that God Almighty will save me and everyone that desire to follow God in holiness from any form of wickedness that have been programmed against you this year. Even 
decades to come. It's not my word. We will only remind him of his word. And the word of God, God said, he will not come fall on dead ground, that he, God Almighty, will cause his word to eat fruit. And he said, you will live and you will not die, that you should choose life. So the word of God is talking, talking to us in Amos chapter 4. Amos chapter 5, verse 4. He says, seek me now, so that you may live. So it is important that we begin to seek God diligently by his word, the Holy Bible. Let us make the Bible our life manual. Let us begin to seek God diligently, genuinely, from the depth of our heart. And I said, how are we going to seek God? Remember, the word of God is so powerful that you must have a knowledge of him. So you have to ask, cry out to God, Lord, I need to know more of you. Grant open my understanding to know the scripture. People of God, you need to know there is something unusual in the Bible. There is mysteries in the Bible that until the Holy Spirit begins to reveal them to you, you'll be living in a strange world, being suffering, suffering from no reason in the hands of the wicked ones. You have no business going through the trials you're going through. All you need to do is to continue to seek the face of God diligently. And how do you seek God? God said, you should seek me and you shall live. If you leave, look at verse 15 of that same Bible verse, Amos chapter 5, verse 15, the word of God said, hate evil and love what is good. Turn your court into true hall of justice. Perhaps, even yet, the Lord God of heaven, Amos, Am, Lebel, Amin, we have mercy on the remnant of his people. Praise the Lord. The word of God said today that we should hate evil. If you want to seek God, you must hate evil and love what is good. You must do away with evil and love what is good. Let me tell you, there is wickedness in the land. But when you decide to partake of that wickedness, one of the things that come around you is that the accuser of brethren will begin to devour what concerns you. But when you begin to act diligently, obeying the word of God, you begin to live by his word. God begins to reveal himself to you. Then you begin to experience the knowledge of God. Then you begin to experience the love of God in a new way. Then you begin to experience the power of his resurrection. One thing is certain. God loves you so much. It is the iniquity of man that has taken God attention away from him because he cannot stand iniquity. Praise the Lord. Follow me again. Looking at the word of God, seeking God and the knowledge of his word today. In Isaiah chapter 55 verse 6, according to the word of the Lord in Isaiah chapter 55 verse 6, Thank you, Jesus. The word of God said in King James Version, it says, Seek ye the Lord, why he may be found. Call ye upon him, why he is near. Isaiah chapter 55, verse 6 is speaking to you and I again. He said, We should seek the Lord now, why we can find him. Seek ye the Lord, why he may be found. Call upon him, why he is near. People of God, do not forsake God. No wonder Azaria said to Asa, from today, seek the Lord. But if you do not seek the Lord, God will abandon you. So it is better you seek the Lord. And one of the things we just read is that we should hate evil and love what is good. Praise the Lord. So let us read for them. He said, let the wicked forsake their ways. And your righteous man is taught. And let him return unto his Lord. And he will have mercy upon him. And to our God. For he will abundantly pardon. Seeking the Lord. Let the wicked forsake his ways. You that old friend of mine. The word of God is talking to you today. Out of love of God, I'm sending this message across to you. 
depart from wickedness. Depart from wickedness. You will not end well with that wickedness. I can assure you, it is impossible for you to overcome Jesus Christ. It is impossible for you to be more powerful by your occultic powers than the power in the name of Jesus Christ. I know Jesus Christ has a time. The what you are enjoying now is the forbearance of God that you will change. But as you fire that arrow, those arrows will return back to you at the fullness of time. And they will consume you. That wicked man that is planning to destroy somebody. He will come across this message. It's the love of God I'm sharing with you. Sincerely from my heart, I love you. And I want you to change. Hell is not created for people like you. I wish you were listening to me today. Because sometime to come, it might be too late. No matter, your courtic friends will abandon you. I will assure you, they will abandon you. When the vengeance of God turn around to begin to fight, when God Almighty begin to fight, according to Isaiah chapter 49, when God Almighty begin to fight in verse 25, he assured me that he will fight. He said to me, I will contend with him that contend against thee, and I will save thy children. People of God, it is time for that person to forsake their ways. Let the wicked forsake their ways. According to Isaiah chapter 55, reading verse 7. Isaiah chapter 55, verse 7. The word of God said, Let the wicked forsake his ways, and the unrighteous, unrighteous man is taught, and let him return unto the Lord. He will have mercy upon him, and to our God, for he will abundantly pardon him. Return to God Almighty. Return to the Lord Jesus. You, that wicked man, that wicked woman, God, we, are, we, we pardon you today. I beg you, change. Hell is not created for you. That place, you, you don't understand. If only you know that God Almighty said a time to born and a time to die, and it's taking place. Is it hell that God said the wicked will end up that will not take to come to pass? Is it not better for us to forsake our evil ways and not end up in that place of torment? I want to appeal to you wherever you are. Make a new leap. Follow me again to the book of Psalm chapter 7. Psalm chapter 9. We are looking at seeking God and the knowledge of his word. Psalm chapter 9, we are reading from verse 9 to verse 10. Psalm chapter 9. Reading from verse 9 to verse 10. I read in Jesus' name. The word of God said to us, The Lord is a shelter for the oppressed, a refuge in time of trouble. Those who know your name trust in you. For you, O oh Lord, do not abandon those who search for you. God Almighty, according to the word of the Lord in Psalm chapter 9, verse 10, does not abandon those who diligently search for him with a clean heart. He doesn't. God is too faithful to his word. God's word is yes. Whatsoever he said he will do with his word, he will. Psalm chapter 9, verse 9 to verse 10. I'm reading King James Version. The Lord also will be a refuge for the oppressed. A refuge in times of trouble. And they that know thy name, we put their trust in thee. For thou, Lord, hast not forsaken them that seek thee. For thou, O Lord, Psalmist declared, thou, O Lord, does not forsake them that seek thee. You know what normally discourages people? People are looking at time. Oh, I've given my life to God. I've tried to live a holy life. I'm doing everything. I just want the rain that I've never experienced in my life. That supernatural rain to begin to fall in my fire. What if that rain will cause flood to your house? Do you want God to give it to you? What you need to do is to continue seeking the, the face of God. Continue living to please Him. Continue striving. At the fullness of time, 
his own time as you continue to have an undying faith for him he will manifest the rain that will not bring flood to your home but it will bring abundant blessing and fruitfulness of your feet but what you need to do seek the lord god almighty by understanding his word the holy bible and living to please him let me tell you one thing now why we're talking about this topic today a lot of us are reading bible but we are not striving to apply it in our daily life you are not seeking god when you seek god you study the word strive strive i repeat strive to apply the word of god in your daily life impossible second per second in your life strive to apply the word of god in your life and I can assure you, as dedicated, determined you will be from the depth of your heart, so also the hand of God will be moved to be established in your heart, in your life, in your family, in your children's life, permanently. What God is looking for is a heart that pants after him. God is looking for the heart that pants after him. That is the kind of heart God Almighty is looking for. A heart that will dwell with him. A heart that will not depart from him, a heart that will establish his presence with him. Praise the Lord. According to the word of the Lord in Psalm chapter 34, I'm reading verse 4. The word of God said to us, I saw the Lord, and he heard me, and delivered me from all my fears. Did he say, Keep quiet? No. I sought the Lord. You must learn to seek God concerning every situation. He said, I, Sammy said, I sought the Lord. And he heard me and delivered me from all my fears. Things I thought were going to consume me, God delivered me from it. This storm that have before me for 20 years, God delivered me from it. This wickedness that I thought will never pass me, that I've been silently crying, oh God, when will this wickedness pass over me? God delivered me from it. He said, I sought the Lord. The word of God did not say, I sought the Lord once. Samuel said, I sought the Lord. No one can say how many times. So because the Bible didn't tell us how many times, we ought to pray. Because he said, men ought to pray always and not to faint. So I sought the Lord. And he heard me. And he delivered me. God is too faithful to his word that he can never fail us. He is too faithful that his word is yes to you. I will save you. His word is victory for you. I will give you victory. His word is deliverance for you. I will deliver you. This is the word of God. God Almighty is faithful that he will not abandon you. Follow me to the book of Luke chapter 24. I'm going to read from verse 44 quickly. Luke chapter 24. I read from verse 44. I read in Jesus' name. Then he said, When I was with you before, I told you that everything written about me in the law of Moses and prophets and in the Son must be fulfilled. Jesus Christ, after he died and resurrected, he made himself, he appeared to the disciples and he said, I told you before, why I was still on earth before he died and resurrected, that everything written concerning him must be fulfilled. I read for that. Then he opened their mind to understand the scripture and said, Yes, it was written long ago that the Messiah would suffer and die and rise from the dead on the third day. It was also written that this message will be proclaimed in the authority of his name to all the nations to all the nations beginning in Jerusalem. There is forgiveness of sin for all who repent. You are witness of all these things. Jesus is saying that these messages that you hear the children of God preaching repent. He said there is mercy for those who genuinely repent. He said, but every word that he has said will surely come to pass. Every message spoken about him by the prophet of old, the book of Moses, and in Psalm, 
He said, this war, this message is most surely come to pass. People of God, is it seeking God and you shall live that it will not come to pass? You think when Jesus Christ says, seek me, seek the word of God, you think it will not come to pass? It will. It's left for us to be obedient to God's instruction. Let me read King James version of that same Bible chapter. Luke chapter 24. I'm reading verse 44. Luke chapter 24. I'll read verse 44. And he said unto them, These are the words which I spoke unto you while I was yet with you, that all things must be fulfilled which were written in the law of Moses and in the prophets and in the psalm concerning me. Then open he their understanding that they might understand the scripture. He opened their mind and their understanding of what? The scripture. You also, when you seek the Lord and in prayer, O oh Lord, as I study your word, Grant me a divine understanding of your word, the Holy Bible. God Almighty, you give you, we grant unto you that understanding. He will change you. He will change you. He will give you an understanding of the scripture. He will make you realize that all power in heaven and on earth has been given unto Jesus, according to Matthew chapter 8, 28, verse 18. He will make you understand. That at the name of Jesus, every need of things in heaven, on earth and under this earth, shall bow, according to the word of the Lord in Philippians chapter 2, verses 9 to verse 11. He will make you to understand that the power to overcome trials, according to the word of the Lord in Luke chapter 10, verse 19. He said, I give unto you power to trample upon serpents and scorpions over the powers of thy enemies. That power will be made manifest in your life. As you seek the Lord, he will grant you a divine understanding of the scripture. That you will come to understand that the book of Jeremiah, chapter 1, verse 10, God said, This day I set thee over nations, over kingdom, to root out, to pull down, and to destroy. The power to root out wickedness out of your life, the power to pull down evil structure that will be waging a battle against your success, He will reveal to you as you seek Him diligently. The word of God said, And Jesus opened their understanding to the scripture. You need to understand what the scripture say concerning you. You need to understand what, what the scripture say concerning you. You know, until you seek the Lord, you will just assume God is going to speak to you. No, you will seek the Lord every day, every night, every opportunity you have. Let me tell you. Sometimes I'm driving. I'm praying. I'm telling you. In my mind, I'll just be praying. So that I will not be distracted, I will concentrate, but I will, my mind, I will pray. Try not to take my mind anywhere. Lord of Jesus, Lord of Jesus, Father, this is not my portion. Father, the people of God in altar of prayer fellowship, the act of wickedness shall not rest upon them. Father, your word said in Psalm 129, according to your word in Psalm 129 verse 4, your word said, oh God, that the rod of the wicked, that the, you, that the rod of, you have set as honor, the rod of the wicked. According to Psalm 125 verse uh, verse 3, you said the rod of the wicked shall not rest upon this, the lot of the righteous. People of God, you must begin to seek the Lord. Every time in your life, seek the Lord. Studying the word of God and seeking the Lord in prayer. Leave the answers to God Almighty. He may alone know how to answer you. He will grant unto you his riches in glory by Christ Jesus. At the fullness of time, praise the Lord. If you look at the book of Acts of the Apostles, chapter 2, maybe we'll just read it briefly. Acts of the Apostles, chapter 2. We're going to just read quickly at verse 37. Acts of the Apostles, chapter 2. Verse 37 says, Hear what the people said in Jerusalem. Acts of the Apostles, chapter 2. Verse 37. Now, when they heard this, they were pricked in their hearts and said unto Peter and to the rest of the apostles, Men and brethren, 
What shall we do? They seek to know. The people in Jerusalem needed to know. The Israelites in Jerusalem that Peter and all the other apostles were preaching to needed to know. They desired to know. So they asked Peter, because the word you have preached today have touched our heart. He touched our heart just like we are, we are all studying the word of God today. If the word of God touched your heart, is to begin to seek God. What do I do? So seeking God to live a holy life is another way of seeking the face of God. What do I do to inherit the kingdom of God? Then Peter said unto them, Repent, and be baptized every one of you in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sin, and ye shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. An answer came to them immediately. What you need to do to be saved, to be partakers of this blessing, this victory that Jesus Christ gave to us when he died on the cross and resurrected, is to repent from your evil ways and seek the Lord Almighty. And mercy will locate you. Peter told them. So you and I, whenever we are confronted with an issue or wherever we find ourselves, let us continue to seek the Lord. Maybe you have been living a life, but you are striving, you are finding it difficult to remove your life hand from that evil lifestyle. Seek the Lord today. God is faithful to hear you. God is what? Faithful to hear your cry. Finally, according to the word of the Lord in Psalm 119, we are going to read quickly from verse 1. Psalm 119. Thank you, Jesus. According to the word of the Lord in Psalm 119, verse 1. I read in Jesus' name. The word of God said, Blessed are the undefined in the way who walk in the law of the Lord. Blessed are they that keep his, testament, his testimonies and that seek him with the whole of their heart. They also do no iniquity. They will seek God with all their heart and they will not do iniquity. Iniquity will not be in them. That is, as you seek the Lord with all their heart, iniquity must not abide in your life. They walk in his ways. They will not do iniquity. They will walk in the ways of the Lord. Thou hast commanded us to keep thy precept, the precept diligently, to keep your instruction diligently. All that my ways may direct, may be di we are directed to keep thy status, that my lifestyle must live in obedience to thy status. How do you seek God? Living in obedience to God's commandment, seeking God. Thank you, Jesus. Then shall I not be ashamed as I strive hard to please God. I don't care about what people say about me. I don't care about what people say about me. All I want to do, I want to make heaven. And mind you, when you are striving to please God, let me tell you the condition to please God. They are so strict that they are more strict than the law of the land. There is no way in the Bible, the Bible com com commanded anyone or permit anyone to kill. No way. I mean physical killing. No way. No way in the Bible that the Bible said it's a must that you must die for somebody to live. It's not there. It's a must. No, 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 no. You will resist the devil and the devil will flee. Nowhere in the Bible that the enemy, the God permitted the enemy to continue to waste your glory. The word of God said to us in Isaiah chapter 49, if you read verse 24, let me read quickly. Isaiah chapter 49, to tell you that there is nowhere in the Bible that God permanently authorized the enemy to continue to waste the glory and destroy the soul of the people of God. The word of God said in verse 24 of that Isaiah chapter 49. Isaiah chapter 49, verse 24 said, Shall the prey be taken from the mighty? Pray, the one that they catch, the one they are holding in bondage in their occultic cage. 
the glory that they have been wasting. The word of God says, shall the prey be taken from the mighty or the law, lawful, captive, the one that they will have right to hold in bondage. Or the lawful captive be delivered. Will those people who the enemy have been destroying, will they be set free? That is in Isaiah chapter 49, verse 24. But the answer came in verse 25. Verse 25 says, But thus hear the Lord, even the captive of the mighty shall be taken away from them. The ones that they have been holding in bondage, they will be released. This is the word of God. So when you seek the Lord and live to obey him, hear what God will do for you. He will set you free from every manipulation, maybe of sin. If sin is what you are struggling with, God will deliver you from that yoke of sin, spiritual sin, physical sin, and slavery. He said, but thus see the Lord, even the captive of the mighty shall be taken away, and the prayer of the terrible be delivered. Even the ones that claim they are so terrible, they are so evil, wickedly, he said the ones they are holding as prey, they want to waste, they want to use, they want to take their life. God said, I will deliver them from their hand. So, like I said earlier, if you are that brother, that sister, you have been struggling for a very long time. Nothing is moving forward. We are moving to another realm. In our prayer fellowship, God is just giving us assignment because he's the one that will provide. Every day. My wife is there Saturday. 11 a.m. New York time. She's doing that which God has commanded her to do. Teaching the women. The men are benefiting. It's in the Bible. Women teach the women. She's teaching the women and the men are benefiting. If a woman preach and you make it to heaven, when you get to the gate of heaven, God will say, don't go. You will not, be, you will not enter because the woman preached to you. When the Bible said, be ye holy. So if a woman preached to me and I became holy by the mercy of God, so I will not enter heaven. Don't get yourself confused. Follow the word of God. Still on that Saturday, 2 p.m., that woman of God, my wife, God bless her, she's also there with the children, ministering the word of God. Children are studying the Bible. On Sunday like this, 12 midday, we are there doing that which God has us to do. By, by the mercy of God, by 5 p.m., we are also there again. Couples Bible study. How to make our home to be in tune with God's plan. As a father, as a mother, as a husband, as a wife, as that child in the home. How to make our home work. Living by the Bible. 6 p.m. We are also there. Still in Zoom time. It is our Zoom platform that this one is taking place. Couples Bible study, 5 p.m. Prayer hour, 6 p.m. Now, 7 p.m. Recovery of destiny. For those that things are not working for, it is time for us to come together and be praying. Time for us to begin to do the unusual. We must say enough is enough. This wickedness must stop. It is still on our Zoom platform. You want to be part of it? Just drop a message. I want to be part of that 7 p.m. Enough is enough prayer hour. For those who say they are so, or things are not working for them. Or they said affliction is there. It will not be solved by man. Let us cry to the one who created it. He has fear part. He will remove the part that is afflicted and bring a new one to, to that Goga. Every dead organ will live again. According to Ezekiel chapter 37. Be part of it. Not everyone, please. Those who have been part of you can go and rest, do other things. But those who say enough is enough. If you know anybody that, that you think enough is enough to this manipulation, it is now time for us to come together again and pray after normal prayer hour that we pray violently. That one is another added one. We are going to another rain. This one is praying the answer come. Praying the answer come. It must happen. The captive must be set free. Every destiny holding in spiritual bondage must be set free. People of God, 
We are just doing what God sent us to do. We don't have a choice. We are slaves to Jesus. If we wake up, he said, do this, we're doing it. When we told people that God just told us, move from the state you were before to another state, 2, 2 a.m. at midnight, we entered the room. We went to a land that we have never known anybody. We don't have anybody. We have never known anybody. And we lived there comfortably. Not to our own power, but God was the one taking charge. After two years, we fasted and prayed. Asking the face of God, what do we do next? And a sister just called us. Are you people not ready to leave that place? Wow. We seek the face of God and another message came. We left that place 2.30 in the morning. Drove for 2.30 in the morning on Wednesday, midnight morning to Thursday. We arrived on Friday, 4 p.m. the next day, driving in a new land. We are just doing the assignment. So also, as we're here, God is giving us assignment. As you see praying online, so also God is engaging us with people. You don't, it will tell you, you don't have a choice. When I was called to ministry, God told me, follow me. You will, to a man, you will look stupid. It, I heard the voice. To a human being, you will look stupid, but just obey me. But this is the purpose I'm saving you. And I believe that the purpose God keep me alive because I don't know how I qualify to be alive today. It's for this purpose. To just obey him. To man, let me look stupid. I'm willing. And I know he alone will provide. He has never forsaken us. He's providing. And God has been doing his work. Souls have been set free. You know, of recent, we wanted to pray for somebody. Pray with somebody, sorry. And now we're praying. I just told my wife, we are not see God what we need to do concerning this thing. Let me tell you. Only my wife, I told. When the message came, we were praying for somebody in that message. And God pointed to the word, no. Don't just declare my word. Read it from the Bible. I was God. He said, open the Bible. Don't quote it from your head. Read the Bible and quote it. Oh God, according to this word, you'll be reading it line by line. He said, then I will answer you. See, sometimes you quote it from me, but he said this situation, you know how I know? He revealed it to me. It was a dead situation. It's an, a corpse, a ready con condemned corpse. That is, their situation is dead. The enemy has finished destroying that life. He said, but I will bring them to life. But make sure you quote it from my word directly. Brothers and sisters, that, that revelation I had that day was caring when God revealed it to us. And it took us like about almost a week after I told my wife, we need to ask God, what do we do about this situation? You see how God is keeping us busy. He just said, go and do my work. Today, he said, those whom their situation is hopeless, today, start it with them. You must begin to pray with them. Today. He said, I don't make it tomorrow. He said, start it today. And I will tell you when. When we were praying, no, I first announced it. He didn't give me a word. Not until later, I said, Start it immediately after the prayer. So the tempo of the prayer hour as it's still hot, continue and increase the tempo to another realm. You will see my hand. So if you know anybody that his life needs to change, you are coming to that platform on that Zoom line. Give the person the Zoom line, or if you are just doing it for the first time, drop a message. I want to be part of that prayer meeting for 7 p.m. for those who their situation is critical. We will send you the Zoom line, the link. All you need to do is to click, it will download, and you'll be part of that great experience. I want to bless God for everyone. Remember today, we have come to learn from the word of God that it is better we seek God before we the enemy begins to seek after us. It is better for us to seek God so that God Almighty will also be with us. Because if you did not seek God, God will abandon you. People of God, how do you seek God? Firstly, you seek God by the knowledge of the word of God, studying the Bible. Seeking God by departing from the evil ways. He said, depart from your wickedness. Seek God by applying the word of God in your life. Seek God by living a holy life. Seek God by knowing Jesus for who he is and letting him be part of you. So people, God, I want you to know. Sister Mercy, please, God bless you. Can you help us to just drop the Zoom platform link if you have it? Just help us put up the Zoom Zoom platform link on the comments page for people to know those who want to be part of it. It's for those who want to be part of the 7 p.m. It's not for everybody, sister. 
It's only for those who said enough is enough. I want to come out from this wickedness. My life must be set free from this occultic witchcraft, marine power, territorial evil bondage. Those who said my life must be set free. Those are the people that program is so not to everybody. The one for everybody is from 6 p.m. to 7 p.m. is a prayer hour for everyone. But the one for 7 p.m. to 8 p.m. is for situations that are critical. I'm not saying you are coming to raise prayer requests. Oh, my brother. Is so if your brother is anywhere, let your brother log in. It's time for him to pray. Oh, my sister. Is so let your sister log in and pray on that Zoom line. If not on Facebook, it's in our Zoom platform. I want to bless God for that brother, that sister. All you need to do is say, I want to be part of it. Send me the Zoom link. 7 p.m. State it. I want to be part of that 7 p.m. experience. God Almighty will visit us. I believe that this program that God wants to do, for everything God has asked us to do, it is always, always there answering our prayer. Like I said, it's not for everyone. It's not for everyone. It's people who said their situation is written up. Come and pray your way to victory. Come and pray your way to victory. You got to be ready. You got to be ready. You know that sometimes I and my wife will awake to me. It's normal. It's a way of life. I will go to bed. We still wake up by 5 o'clock, 5.30. Sometimes 6 o'clock. We're on our way. Moving. Sometimes 7 o'clock. So it's not... Um, it's the, when you sleep too much, the enemy will come in. You can sleep another hour. But between the midnight hour and first thing in the morning, be very careful with your life. Praise the Lord. As many that have heard this word of God today, and you are saying enough is enough. You desire to have a change. People of God, wherever you are, I want you to change your life. Accept Jesus as your Lord and personal Savior. Because the word of God says you should seek him. You can't seek God while you are a perpetual sinner. You cannot say you are seeking God where you are still living in that immoral life. You cannot see God where your lifestyle is killing, destroying. You cannot see God where you have torn your community where you live to a violent community. community. You cannot see God where you are doing stealing, frosters. You cannot seek God. That is not how to seek God. You have to first forsake your ways and cry unto God for mercy. Then God's mercy will be upon you because grace is still available. You never can tell. If you will be alive to take to see the next hour, it's better you make the decision first. Or you gave your life to God before, somehow life pressure made you to fall by the wayside. You are not condemned. You and I, we are still alive. God's mercy is knocking at your door. The word of God is speaking to you today. God's mercy is knocking at your door. You can be saved today. If you live, you will make that decision. As many that have made up their mind, they said, okay, I've tried. I've tried every other thing. I've tried running after this magician that called the pastor. Oh, oh, powerful man of God. Come to Jesus in holiness. And you will see you will be liberated. Jesus Christ said, my sheep hear my voice. And they obey me. And no one shall pluck these ones out of my hands. Because these ones are also in the palm of my father here in heaven. If you read John chapter 20, 10, reading from verse 26 to verse 29. So come and be the sheep that Jesus wants to place in his palm. He will begin to do strange things in your life. I can assure you. He will begin to make him do a new thing that will, be, that will shock your imagination. Let me tell you. Many evil things will be happening around people. It will not come near you anymore. Try it. Come to Jesus and seek him diligently. It's not that you are coming, you are going to go back later. God knows the heart of man. He knows the heart that just come because I just want to, this load to go away from me. No. He's looking for a soul that will come and be established in holiness that will continue to seek him. Holy God Almighty. People of God, whosoever you are, that brother, that sister, that child, that want to give their life to God. All you need to do, wherever you are, that you are all alone there. All you need to do is to submit to God Almighty by saying this few prayer after me. You can say your own in your own way, but make sure you are going to confess your sins and cry out to God for mercy. But if you want to say after me, please just say this few prayer after me. You want to give your life to God? Let us just pray this few prayer. My God and my Father, I thank you. Righteous Father, I thank you. Jesus Christ, I thank you. Almighty God, I crown to you. Today, I confess I am a sinner. Have mercy upon me. 
Almighty God, please forgive me my sins. In the name of Jesus Christ. Almighty God, I decree and I declare. I renounce every evil association I ever belong to. I renounce any relationship I have with the devil and the power of darkness. From this day, I submit unto you, Almighty God. Jesus Christ, come into my life and be my Lord and personal Savior. Help me, O God, to live a life that is holy, pure, with the fear of the Lord in my heart. Thank you, Almighty God, for having mercy and compassion upon my soul. Thank you, Father. Righteous Father, we thank you for saving me. In Jesus Christ, mighty name, I have prayed. People of God, brothers and sisters, not our prayer fellowship, I know whether you know the person or not, I believe by faith somebody is going to give their life to God. Let us join faith with that brother, that sister, that daughter of Zion, that child that have submitted to, to God, that have made that decision today. Let's begin to pray for them and pray that the same grace that God extend unto us that we are saved. Let God extend that grace unto them. And God should strengthen them. My God and my Father, I cry unto you. Please have mercy, O God, upon that child. Have mercy, O God, upon that daughter. Have mercy, O God, upon that family. Have mercy, O God, upon that father, that mother. Daddy, my creator. Today, they have made that decision. Never to go back to sin. Righteous Father, in your mercy. The same grace that you extended to me years ago that you did not allow me to perish, die, and go to hell. Father, please let that same mercy, that same grace be, be extended to these ones, oh God. From today, oh Lord, daddy, in, my, in your mercy, separate these ones from the activities of this evil world and let them be established, oh God, in heaven race. Daddy, from today, make them ambassador of heaven in the name of Jesus Christ. Let holiness, righteousness begin to prevail in their life, in their family, all the days of their life. In the name of Jesus Christ, Jesus Christ, in your mercy, come into their life and be their Lord and personal Savior. Thank you, Almighty God, for in Jesus Christ's mighty name we have prayed. I want to say congratulations to that brother, congratulations to that sister that have come to this platform and are giving their life to God. I pray God Almighty we grant you grace, strength, and power to continue to live a holy, righteous, and godly life. As we round up, please, our program for the week, starting from on Monday, it's like from all through the week, only on Sunday, that we don't do American Midnight Prayer Hour. On Sun, on Monday, starting from Monday, we have um, midnight in America, 12 midnight American prayer time every day, so Monday through Saturday. It's a wonderful experience. For those in the United States of America, you can just send a message onto our messenger that you want to be part of that platform. That one is on our WhatsApp platform, Midnight Hour. On, on Wednesday, it's a time to study the Word of God. The Bible study, altar of prayer fellowship, is a family gathering Bible study where we all come together. It has something to do with individual. It has something to do with our soul as a person. So it's not about ministry. It's about you. It's about me making me to heaven. Time to study the Word of God, 6 p.m. New York time on Wednesday. On Friday, another wonderful time in, presence, in the presence of God. Praying is a prayer hour also. Prayer hour on Friday, 6 p.m. New York time. On Saturday, God using his daughter, my wife, lovely wife, to minister his word to the women. The men are enjoying the program. I am also benefiting. Hearing the word of God, people of God, be part of that experience. 11 a.m. New York time. At 2 p.m. on Saturday still, the children are having a wonderful time in the Bible study. This time is Zoom time. Bible study Zoom, on Wednesday, it is on our Zoom platform. Um, prayer hour, it is on our Zoom platform on Friday, 6 p.m. also. On Saturday, it's on Facebook. My wife, Saturday, 10, 11 a.m. New York time. But on by 2 p.m. on Saturday, it is on Zoom time. Zoom platform that the children are doing their Bible study. It's a wonderful experience. Every day also, God using his, his servant, my wife, to minister the word of God through WhatsApp. Every day, or including Sunday. There is a message coming to somebody. Everyone's phone, including my phone, I'm benefiting. Everyone's phone, there's a message coming to the people's phone. Everyone, message directly from the Bible. Encouraging you, giving you a divine insight into the word of God to just read through and apply it to your life 
as you pray for the Holy Spirit to lead you to apply that word of God in your life. Every day on our WhatsApp platform, if you want to be part of it, all you need to do, just send a message to um, our, our messenger on this platform, this Facebook. Say, please, add, this is my number. Add me to your WhatsApp platform. I want to be part of that quiet time with the Holy Spirit. And I can assure you, immediately you start getting messages to God alone be all the glory. On Sunday, it's still going to be another wonderful time. Having time to study the word of God in altar of prayer fellowship, family worship power that we are having right now, we're just rounding up. I pray God Almighty we continue to enrich you. Again, this afternoon, by 5 p.m., 5 to 6, that is family is strictly for couples. If you are married, but whether your husband or your wife is living with you, come, don't worry. God is about to do something new in your home. It is couples Bible study. We also pray for some few minutes. We are trying to add that one to it too. Then, by 6 p.m., it is time to pray. Pray your, yourself. Pray yourself. We will all join faith together and be praying. Then we give each other opportunity to raise prayer point. Prayer point. You can raise your own prayer point. You want the family to pray with you? As in the altar of prayer fellowship family, we join faith to pray with you. You can raise your prayer point for the entire house as the Holy Spirit lead you to God alone be all the glory. On Sunday, like today, this evening, 6 p.m. to 7 p.m. Finally, for those who want to be part of that, let me go. I am tired of this wickedness. 8, 7 p.m. to 8 p.m. It's not everybody. It is for those who want to, who said enough is enough to wickedness. You will log in to our Zoom platform. If you want to be part of it, just send a message to our messenger. I want to be part of the 7 p.m. Enough is enough prayer hour on your Zoom line. And you will get you will get the Zoom link and it will be sent to you in the name of Jesus Christ. I want to bless God for every soul that have been part of this experience. I know God Almighty who has never failed. He will continue to enrich you. I know God Almighty who has been so faithful. He will continue to strengthen you. Our sister in the Lord system, our sister, Sister Mercy, I, I, I think she has already sent the message. The Zoom code, he has dropped it. Just check. You can see the comment line. Check it. It's right there. The, the Zoom link is right there. That is the code. All you just need to do is just to click in or you send a message on how you want to, how you can, or you just download Zoom Cloud meeting. Then you apply this number. You'll be right in. But if you don't have it, just let us know still. We'll send it directly to your phone. Just send us your details. Or on this same messenger, say you want to be part of it, we'll send you a link for that prayer hour. Specifically for those who are saying enough is enough. Enough. Don't say, don't come there and say, I want to raise prayer point for somebody sick. You connect the person. Connect that person to be part of it. It's going to be from this Sunday, 7 to 8 p.m. One hour, first 15 minutes to talk about what God said concerning you. Why that wickedness is not supposed to be there. Strictly one hour, not exceeding. To God alone be the glory. I want to bless God for everyone. Father Almighty God, we thank you for giving us the privilege to be part of this wonderful experience. Right, so that we give you all the glory. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Almighty God. Right, so that we commit this week into the hand. For as many that have been part of this program to the Lord, we pray that your word be firmly established in their heart. That they will not just be hearer of your word. From this day, we shall be hearer and doer of your word. In the name of Jesus Christ. Father, we crown to you. For you said afflictions shall not rise against the second time, according to your word in Nahum chapter 1, verse 9. The word of God said, what is it that you hold against the people, children, the uh, God's children, that God Almighty will uttermost destroy that evil plan you have, and affliction shall not rise against, against the second time. Father, I decree, affliction shall not rise against any one of us in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Almighty God, we thank you. We pray for divine guidance, according to your word in Psalm 120, as, according to your word in Psalm 125. The word said, Oh God, in verse 2, you said, As the mountains surround Jerusalem, so God Almighty surround these people. Father, we crown to you. Let your mighty presence, O oh God, surround us. Make an head of all around protection around our home. In the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, mighty man in battle. In Jesus Christ's mighty name, we have prayed. Let us share the grace in fellowship. May the grace of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the sweet fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us now and forevermore. Amen. Surely, goodness and mercy shall follow us all the days of our life, and we shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Amen. God bless you all. God bless you, everyone. We appreciate your presence. God bless you. We pray God Almighty will continue to strengthen you in Jesus' name.
Amen. Have a wonderful week ahead.